Welcome to this online session of Ophthalmology from Joint Central International Eye Center. I'm Dr. Wang. Today I'm going to share with you something about strabismus. Have you ever seen patients like the one so here? It seems that they are always using only one eye to focus, with the other eye looking somewhere else. And have you ever wondered why we need two eyes? In fact, Binocular vision is important for us to get better visual acuity, broader visual field, and stereopathies. The brain must be able to fuse the two images from the both eyes simultaneously and further form three-dimensional vision. To achieve this, motor fusion is essentially needed to move the eyes in alignment. Any ocular misalignment such that only one eye views the object of the gut with the correct vertical orientation is called strabismus. In clinical practice, we can reach a comprehensive diagnosis of strabismus by the following factors. The age of onset, conditions including neuromuscular disorders, tumor, trauma, endocrine disease, or developmental abnormalities refractive error and organic ocular disease, monocular and binocular visual function, the direction and amount of misalignment, and the motor function of astrocular muscles. The misalignment may be in any direction, inward, outward, up, down, or torsional. If the fixing eye and the deviating eye can alternatively switch, we have alternative strabismus, which allows the visual development of both eyes. Otherwise, monocular strabismus is a common cause of embryopia. Strabismus that is present under binocular viewing conditions is called manifest strabismus, heterotropia, or tropia, a deviation which develops only after binocular vision has been interrupted, for example, by occlusion of one eye, is called latent strabismus, heterofolia or folia. The most common type of strabismus by far is the committent variety, in which the angle of deviation is not significantly influenced by which eye is facing or the direction of gaze. Cranial nerve pulses and other types of acquired strabismus are usually incomitant. The magnitude of strabismus being less when the unaffected eye is fixing than when the affected eye is fixing, and varying with the direction of gaze. The amount of deviation is the angle by which the deviating eye is misaligned, which is commonly detected by examining the reflective positions of corneal light reflection. Cover test is frequently used by covering one eye and observing the movement of the fixing eye. To simply determine whether or not strabismus is present and the direction of the deviation, we also use prisms together with corneal light reflections or cover test to accurately quantify the amount of deviation. The astrocular muscles work within the surrounding optical tissue to provide smooth movements of the eye and allow for binocular alignment. Limitation of ocular movements may be due to direct involvement of the astrocular muscles interference with the mechanism of action or dysfunction of the oculomotor, trochlea, or abducing nerves. Therefore, oculomotor examination is important to detect which, if any, astrocular muscles or cranial nerves are paralyzed, overactive, or restricting. Limitation of ocular movement is most remarkable at the diagnostic positions of the paralyzed muscles. For example, when lateral rectums 
or the sixth cranial nerve of the left eye is paralyzed. Abduction of the left eye is reduced or absent, which is obvious when asking the patient to look at the left side. Strabismus can result in failure of binocular vision. Sensory phenomena in strabismus are complicated. When the patients look at an object placed straight ahead, the image falls on the phobia of the fixing eye and an astrophobia retinal area in the deviating eye, so that the object of regard is perceived to be in two directions. Correspondingly, another object falling on the phobia of the deviating eye is also perceived as being straight ahead, so that it and the object of regard is perceived to be in the same place. To avoid the proper and visual confusion, suppression or abnormal retinal correspondence could be present. Prolonged abnormal visual experience in a child may lead to embryopia of the deviating eye, commonly seen in constant monocular strabismus. Patients are sometimes found with specific compensatory head posture or habit of squeezing to avoid the propia. Therefore, binocular visual function should be examined to reveal whether there are deleterious sensory effects such as suppression, abnormal retinal correspondence, or the propia. The main objectives of strabismus treatment include the following. Reversal of deleterious sensory effects of strabismus, such as embryopia, suppression, and loss of stereopathies, and realignment of the eyes by medical or surgical treatment. Besides binocular visual function, the psychological and cosmetic benefits of having straight eyes cannot be overestimated. Strengthening or weakening the astrocular muscles by surgical resection or recession is the most common treatment to align the eyeballs. For example, for patients with astrophia, we usually weaken the medial rectums and or strengthen the lateral rectums. In addition, shifting of the points of muscle attachment can also create or alter the rotational action of muscles. The choice of muscles and the surgical extent are determined by the direction and the amount of misalignment and the function of astrocular muscles. Non-surgical treatment of strabismus include treatments of embryopia, the use of optical devices, drugs, and training. The most important optical device in the treatment of strabismus is accurately prescribed spectacles. If there is significant hyperopia and astropia, the astropia is usually at least partially due to the uncorrected hyperopia, also known as accommodating astropia. The full Hyperopic correction should be prescribed when astropia is present. Prisms are sometimes used to produce optical redirection of the line of sight to eliminate the propia. For drug treatment, the injection of botulinum toxin type A can relieve the spasms of an astrocular muscle and balance the antagonism of muscles. At times, a soft training can add in preoperative embryopia treatment or supplement on consolidated surgical correction postoperatively. In summary, any ocular misalignment such that only one eye views the object of regard is called strabismus. Treatment aims at ensuring the best possible visual acuity and binocular visual function, and relining the eyeballs. Here are the references. Thank you very much for joining us.